Today we're talking about the best Western big game hunting cartridges out there. Now, Western hunting, you have different needs. There are bigger game like elk than you're going to find in most Midwest states or in the East. And you'll very frequently have long open shots across canyons or valleys. And so you want something very flat shooting and resistant to wind drift. So if you're getting started in Western hunting and you want to get a rifle ready, today's video is about the cartridge. In my next video next week, we're going to talk about taking any rifle, whatever rifle you have, and setting it up in a way that will work well for you during that Western big game hunt. So let's get started with the 243s, but first, today's video is brought to you by World of Tanks. Right now is the biggest in-game event of the year called Holiday Ops 2023 Inside World of Tanks. Arnold Schwarzenegger is back, but now with Mila Jovovich. She and Arnie will greet you at HQ in the village. There are tons of rewards like premium tanks, medals, special missions. As you complete the character missions from Arnold and Mila, you'll get them as commander. Also, a cool fact, the M47 Iron Arnie was inspired by his own personal tank, which would be really sweet. I don't own a tank, but I did at least get to shoot one the other year, and it was totally awesome. For now, I'll stick to my own Sherman in World of Tanks. Download World of Tanks using the link in the description, but when you're registering, use code TANKMANIA for a premium account for seven days, 250,000 credits, the premium tank Excelsior, three rental tanks for 10 battles each, the Tiger 131, Cromwell B, and the T3485M. So download World of Tanks on your phone, PC, or console via the link in the description. It's free to play. All right, we're gonna hop into the 243s. Take a look at these two little guys. So I selected two cartridges in this caliber. First is the 243 Winchester, that's that guy. And then the six Creedmoor right there. So if you're not familiar with the six Creedmoor, I'm sure you probably are familiar with 243 Winchester. It's what probably most of you shot your first deer with when you were a kid. 243 Winchester is awesome because it's incredibly light recoiling. My kids killed their first game animals with a 243. It's very flat shooting, so it's pretty forgiving if you got your distance wrong a little bit, something like that. Now, my favorite in this cartridge is gonna give the nod to this guy. Of this caliber, I like that six Creedmoor. So six Creedmoor, think of it as an update, just a modernized 243. It's gonna allow you to shoot those longer bullets. It's shooting them really, really fast, almost as fast as the 243. So let's look at a couple numbers. This is using Hornady Precision Hunter ammo for all of the ammo, all of the numbers today. Just because Hornady chambers all of this and I wanted to have one load so we're comparing at least close to apples to apples here. And then you look at, you know, your wind drift at, at 400 yards and you say, dang, that six Creedmoor, even though it's shooting a tiny bit slower with that heavier bullet, it has much higher BCs or the ballistic coefficient of the bullet. It can fly, it keeps its trajectory better. And so you drop a lot less. But I do think six Creedmoor is a very underrated cartridge for Western hunting. And here's why. It kills all of the same animals as the 6.5 Creedmoor because I don't consider 6.5 Creedmoor an elk cartridge. So it kills all the same animals, but it's even flatter shooting. It's, you know, even lighter recoiling. I think 6 Creedmoor might be better at being a Creedmoor than the 6.5 Creedmoor. Okay, that's our first caliber. I would pick the 6 of those. The next caliber is that 257 caliber. This is the 25-06, this tall, thin little guy. So this used to be more popular than it is right now. The 25-06 got punished during the pandemic and this crazy ammo and gun everything that we've had over the last couple of years. The reason is to that caliber of bullet, this 25 caliber, is very uncommon. It's pretty much, there's a Weatherby cartridge and there's the 25-06. That's pretty much anybody, all anybody's getting out of that 25 caliber. And so imagine you're a barrel manufacturer. 
Do you spend a few days switching everything over so you can pump out some 25 caliber barrels? Or do you just stick with your 6.5s and 30s and 7s that are a lot more, more popular? Same thing with the bullet manufacturers. Why make the 25 cal when everything 6.5 is going to sell and you don't have to slow anything down to switch tooling over? So 25 caliber, because it's not very popular, has been punished the last couple years. But if you look at the numbers, it's a pretty dang cool cartridge. It's shooting very lightweight bullets, 110 grains in Precision Hunter at 3,140 feet per second. And the thing is just a laser beam. The thing that does surprise me though about 25-06 is the recoil is kind of in that next class. So I think there's a real advantage to having a rifle in the 10 foot-pounds of, of recoil energy like the 6 Creedmoor. The advantage to having something in that 10 foot-pound range is it feels like your crosshairs don't even move when you shoot. There's so little recoil that even without a muzzle brake or a can on there, you can just see exactly where your bullet goes, you can see the trace, you can see it hit the animal. It's fun for hunting. I like being able to see where that bullet is going. The 25-06 adds another five foot-pounds of energy compared to the 6 Creedmoor. And so that's still very, very light. It's certainly not gonna like hurt your shoulder or anything, but it's gonna rock you off a little bit more and you probably are gonna want a muzzle device. Still, 25-06 is the only entrant here in that caliber and so I think it definitely has to win and for good reason, it's a good cartridge. Oh boy, here we go. The 6.5 millimeters. So I only included two. I know there's 260 Remington, there are many others, but I'm only including the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 6.5 PRC here. For Western big game hunting, I think the 6.5 PRC is just a lot more versatile. And the reason is that many people are gonna hunt elk with a 6.5 PRC who feel a little iffy on 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, personally, I still wouldn't choose 6.5 PRC for elk-sized game. I've done it several times, and I'm just not sold on the results of a 6.5 PRC for that big of game. But if my kids are hunting elk, sure, 6.5 PRC might be a good choice. And it is a crossover for some people who do feel like it's enough. So I like that versatility. Plus, it's just the ballistics are awesome on a 6.5 PRC. Look at 6.5 PRC compared to 6.5 Creedmoor at 600 yards. I mean, there's, what, 17 more inches of drop at 600 yards. Now, I get it. If you're not hunting game at 600 yards, that's very far. I've never shot an animal at 600 yards. But most people today are looking for rifles that you can hunt with and go out to the range with. And a lot of people are interested in that long range shooting, want to practice it, want to do some competitions. And so I feel like 6.5 PRC is really versatile um, in that game. I think I love 6.5 PRC, but I also, of all the rifles I have, I have more 6.5 Creed more than anything else. So I'm not a hater. Now we're getting up to the good stuff. Here we have the 270 versus the 6.8 Western. So first I've got to talk about the 270, because if you compare 270 to the one we just talked about, we just talked about the 6.5 PRC, the ballistics, the trajectory and everything, the recoil of a 270 and a 6.5 PRC are just neck and neck. Now the 6.8 Western, okay, I know I'm gonna take hate for some of these things, but I think the 6.8 Western is the best cartridge design ever for backcountry western hunting. For backcountry western hunting, I think the 6.8 Western is the best design ever. Here's why. It's, it can shoot that 175 grain bullet fast enough that you're gonna be shooting flat. You can be hunting elk with this. I wouldn't even hesitate with 6.8 Western. The recoil is substantial, but it's you know something that any adult should be able to handle no problem whatsoever. It's also in a short action, which the real advantage to me is not that we're gonna save half an inch of pulling our bolt back. 
it's that you're probably going to get a little bit shorter of barrels on this. It's also a nice, efficient design. The shoulder's pushed back enough that we can get longer bullets in there. I really like it. Now, when I say it's a short action cartridge, I, I really should say it's a short-ish action cartridge because it's right up on the edge of what we could still consider short action. And so most people are gonna benefit from a medium action if you're doing a custom or a long action in the 6.8 Western. But still, we'll take what we can get. The 6.8 Western suffers from one gigantic, gigantic problem though. It's only Winchester that's making ammo for this. It's only Winchester that's making brass for it. They, you know, have one branded as Browning for this, but it's Winchester that's making this. And I've just not had really great luck with Winchester ammunition. I tested a few different loads in 6.8 Western, and I was seeing extreme spreads of, you know, 80 feet per second from ammo in the same box. So one bullet might shoot 80 feet per second faster than the next. That's not going to work for real long range shooting. You can't rely on what the, what the velocity is going to be. Plus, I've had weird stuff. I mean, they're using this kind of modern match grade chamber that everybody's doing in case designs. But the problem with the 6.8 Western is Winchester's making that brass and I haven't found it to be very consistent. In fact, sometimes I have my Winchester XPR here that's chambered in 6.8 Western. Sometimes I've put in cartridges and like the first one's good, second one, when you go to close that bolt, it's kind of, you can feel like you're kind of smooshing the brass, just wasn't very consistent. And so you say, well, the factory ammo is just okay. And then if you're a reloader, you're still gonna be using that brass and nobody else is making that brass that I've seen. And so it's just tough to get the real precision out of this. Now, Browning and Winchester are making rifles. There's decent rifle availability if you're happy with one of those. But the, the ammunition and especially the brass, until we get better support for it, even though I think it's one of the best backcountry hunting cartridges designed ever, I think I'm going to give the nod to the 270 Winchester. You can get it everywhere. You can hunt elk with it. It's flat shooting. The recoil is reasonable. It's cheap to shoot. 270 Winchester is one of the best cartridges out there even today. You guys know this is my favorite caliber. These are the two or the 284 caliber or seven millimeter. And the ones that I've chosen here are first the seven millimeter. Oh, sorry. We have seven PRC. Then we have seven mag, 280 Ackley improved and the seven millimeter 08. The one that I'm going to cut out for my personal preference first is actually the 7mm 08. You guys know I've been talking about 7mm 08 recently and, and I even got to the point that I really wanted to get a rifle in 7mm 08 and I still do. But when I've looked more at the ballistics and the numbers of 7mm 08, I just don't know how much it's really bringing to the table. I mean, look at 7mm 08 compared to 6.5 Creedmoor. Well, the bullet, at least in precision hunter ammo, is only seven grains heavier. That's like two toothpicks heavier. And then you look at the velocity and that's eh, 70 feet per second faster. Again, you might get that much variation just within one box of ammo. It's kind of a falsehood to think the seven millimeter 08 is somehow a next class of cartridge that's yeah, you know an awesome elk cartridge if you don't think the 6.5 Creedmoor is because they're really, really similar, these two cartridges. So for this, at least, I'm cutting out the 7mm 08. So left, we have 7 PRC, 7 mag, and 280 Ackley improved. I, I, these are all great cartridges. I don't think you can even choose between them. They just, it just depends on what exactly you're looking for. I think the 280 Ackley improved the person that should be shooting that is somebody that values a lot of cartridges in the mag. You know, you might get four or five in your magazine because it's kind of a skinnier, skinny little tube there. Um, it's also less recoil and it's shooting fast enough that you can reasonably hunt elk with it, no problem. Then you look at the seven mag 
and the 7 PRC and you see ballistically in terms of you know velocity and grain weight that you're shooting and the recoil man they're just neck and neck really the way you choose between 7 mag and 7 PRC is are you willing to go with less availability of ammunition in 7 PRC of course you know it's still brand new in order to get that pushed back shoulder the you know modern geometry everything the match grade chamber all of those little advantages you know if you're a reloader 7 PRC a hundred percent if you're not and you know it's gonna be hard to find that ammo over the next few years pick the 7 mag for sure so I don't know how to pick a winner there, except for me, I have to pick the 7 PRC. The 7 PRC, it, yeah, it's, it's so good. I love shooting 7 PRC. It's just that sweet spot of ballistics. When we look at numbers for 7 PRC, it's just so quickly apparent why this cartridge is compelling. Super high BC bullets right at an efficient spot so you're not burning out barrel. Yeah, it's just a great, great choice. All right, so I'm picking 7 PRC, at least for me, even though there's some great ones there. Next up, the 30 cals. So this is 300 PRC. Apparently I shot my last one, so I don't have a bullet in that case. 300 Win Mag, 300 WSM, 30 out 6, and 308. So for me personally, the reason you choose the 308 is because it's cheap. That's why you pick the 308. It's the cheapest true big game cartridge to shoot, period. And I've, I've studied, I've gone, gone through all the numbers. The 308 is the cheapest you can shoot. That's a huge advantage if you shoot factory ammo. If you reload, it's not really gonna be any cheaper than anything else, except maybe for finding brass. So 308, if you're looking for an inexpensive round, you're gonna keep shots within 400 yards you like the 308. That's an awesome choice. The 30 out 6 adds a little 150 feet per second onto that 308, which makes the ballistics a lot more compelling at longer ranges, which frankly can be required in Western hunting. You know, I just showed you guys we went hunting with my son Ruger, and his shot was 400 yards, and Boy, you want that little bit of extra speed, that little bit of resistance to wind drift at that distance and everything. And so when you've got to make a little bit of a longer shot, 400 yards, and you'll take every advantage in speed that you can get. So 30 out six is awesome there. It's also inexpensive to shoot. And here's a weird thing. I might say it used to be ubiquitous. Strangely, even though the ammo is everywhere, I have been very surprised at how few rifles I've been seeing chambered in 30 out 6 on store shelves. People just aren't choosing it as much in a brand new rifle. You may not find it as well. It's weird. I was in a major retailer that had, you know, hundreds of guns in stock, and I said, "Show me what you got in 30 out 6." And he said, "Zero. We don't have any." <laughs> when that was an anomaly, but it is interesting that it's being chambered less. All right, next is 300 WSM. So 300 WSM, think of it as a 300 Win Mag in a short action. And so you're gonna get shorter barrels um, because it's in that stubbier case. Um, it's also, it's, it's, it's out there. You're gonna find 300 WSM ammo and rifles fairly commonly. It's not terribly hard to find. It's like the last of the WSM cartridges to survive, really. And then the 300 Win Mag, which is, you know, it, it's your 30-06 Magnum, right? It's just adding another 200 feet per second to it. That's, I mean, for elk hunting, 300 Win Mag is probably the most popular cartridge out there. And then you say the modernized version of the 300 Win Mag is this guy. It's the 300 PRC. It's giving you more of tighter free bore and everything, that match grade chamber. Um, it's also shooting really heavy bullets, you know, 212 grains in the LDX. And so how do you choose between the 30 cals? They kind of all have their different preferences. But for me, if I had to pick my favorite for a Western hunting cartridge, it's going to be this one, the 300 WSM. So now we have the equalizer. We're cutting these out. And we talk about at least Jim's favorite cartridges for backcountry hunting. 
one in each caliber. 300 WSM, 7 PRC, 270 Winchester, 6.5 PRC, 25-06, and the 6 Creedmoor. If I had to cut one out here, it's probably the 25-06. It's an awesome cartridge, but it's just harder to find right now. With the ammo shortage, we've got to take that into account. Now, that sounds weird to say because the 7 PRC is in, like, it's an unobtainium. It's extremely hard to find right now. For me, I already have brass, and so I can be reloading it. Um, but for if you don't, do avoid the 7 PRC until you can get plenty of ammo for it. You don't want to have a gun that you can't feed. Unfortunately, even though I, I would, I'd probably put 7 PRC, I think it's the best out there. If you just say like, hey, what's the best backcountry hunting cartridge? For me, it's the 7 PRC. If you, I just have to take one caliber to go, one cartridge to go on every Western hunt ever again with, I'm taking the 7 PRC. I would hunt elk with it, no question. Deer, it's flat shooting, the recoil is mild, it's efficient. I love it because I'm going to be reloading it. And so I'm not worried about finding ammunition. So that's my take on Western big game hunting cartridges. It's just an opinion. All of these cartridges on the table are awesome designs. Use whatever you have, but those are a few of my favorite. Thanks for joining me. Next time, we're talking about picking a rifle for Western big game hunting. And don't forget to download World of Tanks.